Hello, can you hear me okay? Okay, great. I see some people are coming on now. I'm going to wait just a minute or so and um, wait for a few more people and then I'll get started. Good, good. I'm glad you can hear me okay. I've got my fan blowing um, and I was just hoping that that wouldn't interfere uh, with, the, uh, with the audio. I get all flustered when I do these things, so, you know, having some extra air is uh, kind of nice. Okay, great. Yeah, lots of new people this week. Uh, it's wonderful. Um, in fact, uh, if you have people you want to invite to the group, uh, please feel free. Just make sure they're interested in jewelry making or in mixed media um, rather than just have people that won't participate in the group. I, I'd really like to have us all be an interacting group and share ideas with one another. And uh, I have lots of... Uh, techniques that I would like to share with you all. So um, yeah, just ask them to join up. Okay, I guess I'm going to get started. Hi, Fran. Hi, everybody. Um, I uh, wanted to start off with first, I don't know if uh, many of you have seen the video that I did last week on the etching on copper. But uh, this is kind of a, a follow up, but also you know, an additional technique to add to your repertoire. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the stamps that you should use if you're going to pursue the alcohol inks. Um, and I'm going to focus mostly on the alcohol inks in today's um, demo. Uh, I will touch on a couple others, but um, for this particular technique, I use this pretty much always on etched copper. Uh, although you can use it on others, but your results are going to vary. So uh, I'm going to start off by showing you some of the pieces that I have colored uh, in the past. And I hope that you can see them okay. Um, these here, right here, are the alcohol inks. Maybe I should use my pointer. These are the alcohol inks. This and this and this are uh, the Impress Arts uh, enamel marker or enamel pen. This is the Vintage. I only I have this and this in the Vintage and it, and these are pieces that well the cuff I made quite a while ago. The the necklace also has the Impress Arts uh, pendant on here. So uh, they all have good qualities about them. They're all different. So uh, let's see. Okay, so I wanted you to see those. If you can see them okay. It's not 
rocket science, this stuff, guys. It's, it's a lot of trial and error, and I have erred a lot, but um, I've learned some things over time, and I'd like to share those with you and maybe make your journey a little bit easier. But if you're going to um, use the alcohol inks uh, in your etching, there are some stamps that just don't lend themselves well to the ink. And by that, I mean um, designs like, like this that are really busy and dark. Uh, it'll etch fine. I don't know what quality you'll get in the ink. Well, I do know what quality you're going to get in the ink. Anywhere, here's another stamp. This is probably a better example. Anywhere that there are flat areas like this, these are all great for etching. So don't let that, you know, deter you from doing that if that's just a simple etched piece is what you're going for and not the color. But if you want to add color to this, the the premise with the alcohol inks is that you need these deep spaces you need to get a nice good etch that allows the ink to flow down into those little spaces that's where you're going to get your color because what you're going to see in the demo is that when i sand over this to reveal the copper any areas that are flat like this just super flat the the sanding sponge that I'm going to use is going to rub all the color off of that. It'll be great on all these other areas, but if you're going for color on this, I'm afraid the alcohol inks is not a good choice for this kind of stamp. But as just a copper etched piece with liver sulfur on it, it'd be beautiful. So that's just something to know when you pick out stamps. Um, here again, I'll just show you this little bee body. This is another one that I'm talking about with the flat areas. He is, his body is pretty flat, this, this whole area. Now the ink will go down into those little recessed areas real well, but when you sand over the top, you're going to be sanding off all the ink on that design. So that's something to keep in mind when you're picking out your design stamps. There's so many beautiful ones there. Uh, out there available and uh, some just aren't going to work well for this. Okay, so this is my issue is getting all these thoughts in my head all in the right order to present to you without getting ahead of myself or forgetting something. So I guess we're just going to see what happens. So, okay, so last week we etched some pieces and I'm going to lower the camera here. Oh, there's another thing. Um, I have found, I was kind of playing around, you know, with these uh, foreign coins. I don't know if you can see those okay. But they have pretty little edges and sometimes they have some really cool designs on that. Some of those will work uh, well also. So I did, I did this little coin. I don't know if you can see it. It doesn't really show the design so much, but I really like that uh, shape of the metal, so I just thought I'd try it out. Nothing ventured, something ventured, never, nothing gained. I don't know, however that goes. Nothing ventured. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off me. Uh, also, another little thing that I didn't discuss last week is that you can do these little tubes. In the etching solution so that's kind of cool uh, and you can also color these as well you can put little domes on them uh, little beads that you or uh, discs that you dome you can make uh, little birdhouses or something you know cool little things like that so that's another possibility and these are pieces of copper pipe uh, that I got in the plumbing section at a hardware store so uh, there's there's stuff out there that uh, that you can play with too. Okay, um, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna turn the camera down a little bit. Hopefully this will work. Can you guys see that okay? All right. Um, okay, so last week we did 
these uh, we did the lottery wheel we did a heart we did a well we did one heart but I, I have another one uh, a heart with a spider web on it uh, I don't know what else I did I guess one of these little guitar pick things and uh, so those are see these are some of the pieces we're going to work with today um, but I also wanted to tell you this is not just limited to um, etching that you can also use the color on roller printed metal which is very nice this this is what uh, this bracelet is roller printed and on this one I use the impress arts pen which um, I really I really like this verdigris color a lot I use it a lot um, makes really neat earrings and okay and this one was etched this cuff was etched and that i put the um, vintage paint on there so the difference um the difference with um get rid of that with the alcohol inks that th this is how they come they're really messed up bottles because I've used them a lot. Um, there's tons of different shades. Some of them are, oh, this was the patina, sorry. Um, ink here. And yeah, the, the roller printer, printed work, roller printed metal works great. Uh, specifically or primarily, I would say with the Vintage and the Impress Arts enamel pen. Those work really good too. See, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, okay, so there's the inks. The vintage patinas are made by Ranger. Also, they come in bottles that look very much the same, although they say patina on them. And this is the Impress Arts pen. And these come in, there's like five different colors. Of course, I have them all because... I'm just that way. Uh, got to have all the things, you know, you just got to have all the things. Anyway, I have found that the ones that I use the most in what I do are the green or verdigray, ver verdigree, I should say, and black. The black one is great for um, if you're stamping on metal and you want to um, have that color come out in the recessed areas. So uh, you can just uh, use this like a Sharpie marker basically, but it's, it, I think it's a little bit more durable in the long run. Um, you can use that with, in the, um, in the lines of your stamping or even on the roller printed metal, it works just fine. And then you can uh, remove the excess with uh, a dirty pro polish pad. Uh, those work really well too. And what else am I missing? Anyway, those are the two uh, of the Impress Arts pens that I use the most. So there's that. And, okay. All right, so um, I first discovered this, um, I, I don't know, probably a, about 2012, maybe something like that. And I kind of worked with it and kind of tweaked it a little bit. And then I taught um, a couple of classes at Beaten Button in 2014 and 2015 on, uh, on the coloring along with, um, with the etching class, which was fun. It turned a lot of people on to uh, just different techniques. This is not, uh, this is a mixed media technique. This is not a, a true jewelry technique in my opinion but I mean it's certainly wearable it's fun uh, it's not serious jewelry is what I would call it I, I, I think it's just basically fun stuff so um, I'm hoping that you enjoy the process and kind of play around with it a little bit there's just tons of stuff that you can do so uh, you can dome it when you're done 
basically what I do, I guess I should just quit talking and start working. Um, what I do, the process to using the alcohol ink that I use is I use a white latex paint and I have a little dabber, just a little foam dabber. I, for lack of a better term, I think that's what you call this thing. Anyway, um, so I'll just use a little bit of latex paint and I put it in a little condiment cup. You don't need a whole lot. And this, this is just paint you can get at the craft store. Or if you're not shopping in stores right now like I am, Amazon gets everything. So, but you pay more. So there's that. Okay, so when, um, when I'm preparing the metal, it's just the, the bare metal. This has some oxidation on it. It does not matter for this uh, purpose. Okay, I'm going to turn you down here. So I've got my latex, white latex paint in here, my dabber, and I'm going to just get a little bit of paint. And, and here I go getting ahead of myself again. You should prepare the whole. You, uh, you can get by without doing that first, but it's better if you just have that ready first. So let me just... Put a hole in this piece. All right. All right. So I've got that in there and I'm just going to pounce it. Not hard, but you want to fill in all the areas of the metal, okay? And you'll do that with all of the pieces that you're working on, uh, one after the other. Here, I'll do another heart. Get a little bit more paint. Dab, 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 dab. Oh, I didn't make my hole, that's okay. All right. It's not a tough method, okay. All right, so I'll set that aside, let those dry. It doesn't take too terribly long, but it does take a little bit. Now, for this, when I'm using the alcohol ink, um, I usually put a paper towel down. That's going to help me. And I have these neat little things called micro tip applicators. Um, they are wonderful for uh, little small applications of things. Um, I worked, my, my real job in life uh, was dentistry. I worked in dentistry for 34 years, and I learned a lot, not just about teeth, but um, tools and different things. Uh, we had a, a ton of fun stuff in the office that I really enjoyed playing with. So I guess it was kind of like my destiny to, uh, to work with uh, jewelry stuff later because we had things like these little micro tip applicators uh, that came later in my career. And uh, they're used to put little uh, medications in the tooth when you're, you're doing fillings and stuff. And I'd always look at them and say, you know, there's gotta be something else to do with these. They're, they're pretty nifty little things. And when I started playing with the ink, uh, I found that I needed something to get in tight little spaces to stop some of the flow uh, of the ink, and these were perfect. So um, I, I order them now in bulk, and uh, you can get them in craft stores and stuff, but I think they charge a lot more than if you could get a bulk pack. Um, sometimes some of the dental supply places sell these things and they're a lot more reasonable uh, to get big quantities uh, if you're going to use them, of course. Uh, the other thing, we used a flex shaft in the office, we used a polishing lathe, we had all kinds of drills and burrs and sanding discs, 
to make temporary crowns and different things and uh, doing this kind of stuff now, you know, the jewelry making, uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's, I feel a lot uh, familiar with a lot of things. So um, I just needed to throw that in there. Anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, you would never think in a dental office, oh, and the tools too, the instruments, uh, when they were used uh, or, or worn down and now they file everything and, and reuse them. But before they used to just pitch them. And uh, I've, I've got several different instruments that uh, are great with metal clay, different things. So um, yeah, that, that uh, experience was pretty valuable. For my journey uh, into the mixed medias and jewelry making world. Okay, so just to save a little bit of time, I had already dabbed a couple of pieces. And let's see, hopefully you can see this. Okay, so I've got two little guitar pick shapes right here. And let me kind of zero in here. I also, I should have given you materials in the beginning of what I'm using, but I will make up for that uh, by posting everything that I'm using. I'll have a materials list uh, available for you that you can uh, see, but I'm basically using regular isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to have that in a little cup as well, and one of my little micro tip applicators. I'm going to put on gloves because this stuff stains really badly and it gets in all your dry cuticles and, and everywhere that you don't want it to be and it takes a lot of scrubbing to get it off and um, you can just avoid that by wearing gloves. So what I usually recommend is starting off with maybe three or four colors and I don't really care if the right cap goes on the right bottle at this point. It, it just gets all mixed up. So you can just have all your bottles open that you're going to use. And you know they sell uh, an alcohol blending solution alongside of the um, alcohol inks, but you really, you don't really need to purchase that. It's just basically alcohol. And I use that to um, to clean my little microchip applicators. Now these things do not hold up real well. So um, you can expect that. The little fuzzy part that's on there, it wears off pretty quick. So um, that's why it's nice to have a, a bunch of them around. Okay, and when I dispense my inks, let me get this stuff out of the way. I dispense it, it, it this stuff comes out really fast. So I just, just dispense a little bit on the tip of my applicator, just, just like that, just a little bit. And I'm just going to drop it down. And the ink starts to spread right away. Can you see that okay, guys? It starts to spread. And it's really pretty random uh, where stuff ends up. Oh, you know, I should, I should do this first. That can sit there for just a minute. Hold that thought, folks. Okay, I'm going to do this sunflower because that one requires a little bit more precision. Notice I eyeball where my holes go. I cannot be bothered measuring where it's going to be or marking where it's going to be. So that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to get my white paint again. and dab this sunflower. Now the reason I'm using the white paint over the uh, metal is because it's going to give an opaque 
look to the ink. The ink is, is pretty transparent. Uh, that's really kind of too much paint. Really working with paper towels underneath is, is really a good thing. You will get stuff schmutz on the back of your pieces, but you'll clean that off later on. But it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry while I go back to this other one. Because this one, this one does require just a little bit more precision in the application if you are going for uh, true sunflower colors on there. Now, another interesting thing with this is, all right, you can see that I've put this butterscotchy color on here. And if I go to reapply in that area over that, Sometimes it works out great, and sometimes a second coat will kind of dissolve the first coat. So uh, that's that's a, another thing that's kind of hit or miss. So I'm just going to go around that way. And now I use my alcohol to clean off the ink on that little applicator and wipe that off. You still get a little color, but it's not going to really make any big difference. I generally start off with my lighter colors first and then uh, progress with um, with the darker colors. And you can do one color, you can do two colors, three colors, as many colors as you want. Uh, I try to keep it simple in the beginning just so that you learn how to use, uh, have control with the ink. If you would just use the applicator tip and, and drop, it would flood the whole thing. So that, that's just the nature of the ink. It does, does that. So I use the same alcohol rinse for every color. Wipe off the tip, and I'm going to go some do some eggplant color. It just kind of spreads along those lines. Okay, and I'll add a fourth color on this one. This is really to show you just the technique, not really um, a perfected piece. They dry relatively quickly. And I'll show you the difference of putting the ink on a piece of metal that has not been painted versus the paint. Okay, so I've got four colors on here. All right, and let that dry for a minute. Okay. So I'll set my inks over to the side. And this one's almost ready, not quite. You could use um, a heat gun on here if you wanted to, to speed up the process. Uh, but I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to look at your questions and see. Yeah, if I don't if I don't respond to your questions at the at the time that you're asking it, uh, I will go over this uh, video later and uh, put any uh, responses that are necessary in there. Yep, let's see here. Okay, well, a lot of you are watching. That's great. That is great. That makes me happy. Patty says, oh dear, this could be dangerous since I can make rubber stamps. Oh, oh, that's that's awesome. 
That's awesome. Yeah, as Francesca says, it's another rabbit hole to go down in, and all of this stuff truly is. It, it is something else. Okay. Yeah, you got to have all the things, that's for sure. Now that I'm retired, I can have all the things. Well, not all the things, but more things than I could have years ago, so... Um, that's kind of fun. And my friend Rhonda, who I, I dearly love, she's just as bad as I am. And we, we feed off of each other constantly. We see a new tool and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, we got to have that. Got to have it. And mm -hmm. a lot of things um, we share, you know, we sh we'll go in together and buy things together and, and share them, you know, it, and it, it's been working out great. Now, you know, if we ever get divorced someday, I, I don't know how we're going to split those things up. But um, but right now, it's a great arrangement, and, and it allows us to have more of the things. So, uh, Rhonda, I, if you're watching, you know, I, I'm sorry if I embarrassed you, but uh, it, that's the way it is. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're both like like squirrel, you know. There's, there's a new technique. We've got to try it. And that's why... Uh, I've never really focused on any one technique. There's a lot of things that I really like. Uh, I really like glass a lot. I like enamel a lot. Uh, I've never delved into metal smithing so much as I have the last couple years. Uh, I, I, I sorely need help with that. But, you know, my attention is like all over the place. One week I'll be doing one thing and then it's like, oh no, I got to try something else. And maybe a lot of you can relate to that. I, I don't know, but that's the way I am. And uh, it's been working for me. And uh, all this stuff just helps me cope with life in general, especially now, you know, with all this COVID nonsense. Uh, it, it's really a great thing to, to have something that you enjoy doing, to have some kind of creative process. So uh, there again, the things that I present to you I'm hoping to do each week on Wednesdays, and they will be different things every week. I'm not sure if uh, if a group project will come along. I know a lot of you guys are busy doing other group projects in, in other groups, and that's wonderful. I encourage you to do whatever, whatever it is that makes you happy. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just, uh, it'll be a mod podge of, of different things probably that I present. So if you guys have suggestions of things that you might want to see me present, uh, I do a great many different techniques. So uh, just shoot me a message and see if it's something that we can uh, put together. I'd be happy to demo anything for you. Um, okay, so the sunflower is now dry. And this one, you know, and, and the other thing, guys, is if you need better vision, uh, make sure that you have good magnifying glasses. Now, these are not great magnifying glasses, but it, it's my go-to. I've got all kinds of different visors and, and magnifiers, but this is just easy for me to stick on top of my head and put over my glasses. And I know I look like a dork, but, you know, that's okay. I, I can live with that. So, all right, here's the thing. And you have to really look close, but you can see all your lines in here. And I'm going to try to apply the ink in the colors like a natural sunflower would be in those areas and also stop the flow to go into the other areas where I want to save my color. Now, I thought I had a finished sunflower, but I, I, I had it on the picture of the, uh, of the uh, announcement for the, for the class. So... I don't know how well you'll be able to see, but I hope you can. Um, I am going to start with the butterscotch. And basically, you know, I put my other colors off of the table because I didn't think I was going to need them, but oh well. I would use a brown as well for the center of the uh, sunflower. 
If I hold this up, maybe it'll be better for you to see. I don't know. But I'm going to apply the yellow or butterscotch, whatever they want to call it, and stay within the lines of the center of that flower as best I can. Get a little bit more ink. Okay, if I had my brown ink with me, I would just put a few little dots here and there of that. And it's, um, it's going to spread a little, but you can control it as much as possible with that. All right. Now, I really need the brown. Hang on a minute, guys. Okay, I have returned. It's called caramel. Caramel is really a better center for the sunflower because the leaves are going to be the butterscotch. Just keep that here for a minute. Whoa, if you get too much, just do it on your paper towel. Dab that extra off. Yes, the caramel is a much better color for the center of the sunflower. Okay, so now clean that off. Now I'm going to work on the petals with the butterscotch. And I hope you can see this okay. It takes a fairly steady hand, but um, it's not imperative, but I, I find if you can keep part of your arms down on the table, you can have a little bit better uh, result, not shaking so much. Okay, so it's starting to look like a sunflower. Now I'm going to add some green. And the green I am using is called Meadow. I don't know if they've changed um, any of the names. I know that they keep coming up with all kinds of different colors. Or at least they did. I haven't bought alcohol inks in years, well, a couple years anyway, because I have so many from teaching classes uh, that as long as they're closed, they store just fine. They don't evaporate. 
and the short amount of time that you're out here using them, I mean, it doesn't um, evaporate that quickly. At least I've never noticed it. Okay, so I guess I could get, well, no, I guess I could give it a little bit more. And kind of a pretty thing to do also is you could, well, it's probably not going to show very well, but you could put a little bit of something, something, something. This might be a little bit too dark. Well, maybe not. But you could apply a little bit of color but a lot of this is going to get sanded off it's just the way it is it's the nature of this because there are no lines in this area it's a flat area so um, I will use a very light touch when I go to uh, sand this but um, it could uh, very well all come off. Okay, so that's my coloring on this. Okay, and I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes. It doesn't take long. Okay, so now let's go to the piece that I already colored, this little triangle. And what I use is, this is probably backwards, but it's a polar block. I get these at Sally Beauty Supply. I have tried a great many different uh, sanding blocks, nail blocks. Uh, I, I like this one for this specific uh, technique. It seems like it's the least aggressive. And what I'm going to do is go around my edges and take off any paint that is on the edges because you don't want that to look messy. And on the back, I'm going to take that off on the back as well. And then, ever so lightly, you're going to sand across the top it would be better if I had this on the table, probably. I think I will do that. I'll sand across the top, which reveals the raised copper lines of the etch. That's where I was saying a good deep etch is best for working with alcohol inks. So that way you get those nice raised copper lines showing through and if you put too much paint on which I think I did on here it kind of still looks white on there and I don't really care for that too much so this is another thing that you have to be very careful with but the little handy dandy toothpick is my tool of choice for removing this white paint this takes a very steady hand and good vision. I'm going to keep this one on the table to do, but I'm just going to scratch those white lines off and try not to uh, scratch the, the uh, paint next to it like by going off course a little bit. But you'll be happy if you take the time to do that if the white paint annoys you and it does to me so I will take the time to do that a lot of this is trial and error like I said before if you uh, 
you learn every time you do something. Uh, to me, I learn something each time. And mostly it's learning what not to do, but that's just, uh, that's just how it is. That's the price you pay sometimes. But to me, it's worth it in the long run. So I'm not going to fiddle fart around with this too much because there's other things to show you. But that's basically what I do is to get that white paint off is just scratch it very gently and there we go. Okay, so it's a little bit better. Right now, it doesn't look so hot, but this is what it looks like before you seal it. And I'm gonna talk about that uh, next. That makes the color pop, is by putting the sealer on it. I use an acrylic spray, primarily. Um, I got this stuff called Royal Coat Decoupage Spray. It's an acrylic spray. It doesn't matter if you see this, the words on it, because they don't make this anymore. Uh, but any other acrylic spray, glossy acrylic spray, acrylic spray should work just fine. Um, when, when I was doing my classes with this, I really liked it. And um, then I had heard somewhere along the line that they were going to discontinue that. So I went to Michael's and Joanne's and I bought I don't know, 20 cans of it. I bought whatever was left and I still have that stuff, but, um, but I know that other acrylic sprays will work just as well. Also, you can use, um, the vintage glaze. You can use that on, on, uh, this as well, if you wanted to. So at this point, I would dap this piece. Uh, it's probably going to be an earring or something like that. So I take one of my dapping blocks and I just want a little bit of a dap and I put a little piece of paper towel in there. I don't know if it really protects it or not, but it makes me feel like it is. So um, I am going to dap this. Just give it a little bit of curve. And then it's just got a little bit of a dome, not much, just enough. Uh, and then I'll put this aside uh, to spray it. And I'll spray the other things all together, and then you can see. All right, so is this one dry? Yes, it is. Okay, so here again, I'm going to take my polar block, scratch off any excess paint on the sides. Okay, and now I'm gonna put it on the table and give it a little scrub. Gently, always start gently. It's not so bad in the high places but where there's no lines, like I said before, that's going to take all your paint off. And then you will be sad. But you can always do it over again. But as I'm doing that, do you see how the copper lines are being revealed? At least I hope you can. And here, where there was no ridge you can see the bare copper right there and that's okay at least to me it looks okay like that but i want to go over these petals a little better <clears throat> and reveal a little bit more of the copper i have not tried this on silver i wouldn't waste the uh the silver on it to be truthful i, I think copper is just great with this project 
uh, I would save my silver for something uh, a little bit different. Oh, the blue paint stayed on pretty well. I'm pleased. You just don't know sometimes. Uh, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes not so much. All right, so I'm going to scratch off a little bit of this white on the edge between the center of the sunflower and the petals just to get that off. These, um, this shape right here makes a great bangle um, topper, I should say that, um, to put on a bracelet. You can put that, uh, dome it a little bit and uh, either make a chain or something to, um, to use as a bracelet. I think they're pretty, or as a pendant, they work well, well too. Now, if I was making this to um, to sell or whatever, I would uh, take a lot more time with it and really clean this all up. But you get the idea. It uh, it looks pretty nice like that. Okay, so I didn't clean the back. I'm going to do that. That white paint gets everywhere. And you can seal the back of these too with uh, acrylic spray if you want, or some Renaissance wax. You can do that. I did try, um, I did try a little experiment using Renaissance wax to see if I could seal these pieces with that, but um, it it doesn't bring out the shine. So you know it's fine for the back, but for the front, that's really not so good. Uh, bronze and brass, yeah, you can use that. Uh, bronze and brass, yes, but other etching solution. For, yeah, uh, it, the silver requires a, a different etching solution than the brass or the bronze or, or uh, copper, I mean. Okay, so I'm going to leave this as done, okay? Now I'm going to show you the... Um, the vintage and that you don't need to have anything on the background because um, it's an opaque it, it's not a transparent like the alcohol inks are so let me get a piece these little houses are cute too aren't they these were um, Dar Shelton had made uh, he made a lot of dyes for me in the past and we had this uh, made as a, um, oh, let's see here. Get rid of that. Uh, I, we had this made as a long house, but we can also cut it short and, and use it as a little short house too. So these are kind of cute. Um, maybe I'll do him in vintage. Okay, I'll do him in vintage. This one happened to have liver of sulfur on it, but... Um, that's that was made for another purpose and I didn't use it. So let's get the vintage. The the vintage has a little uh, mixing ball in there, so you want to make sure that you get that ball rolling in there, and so the mix is real good. This one you can just use the tip as the applicator. There's nothing to this at all, in my opinion. Let me get down here. I've got my little house here. And spread some of that out. Well, I might use an applicator anyway. That's a lot quicker. We'll make the blue house.
if you do any kind of scrapbooking, um, these little pieces are really kind of cool to to add to uh, journals or cards or whatever, just because they're unusual and they're kind of fun, kind of whimsical. Okay. Now I don't let this stuff dry too long because it gets really hard to remove. Okay, so that's on there. And if you don't let it get too dry, you can use a Pro Polish pad. And remove the raised areas where the ink is or the paint. And you can remove as much or as little as you want just on kind of the look that you're going for. So the Vintage is perfectly fine. It, it just has... Uh, a little bit different properties but honestly I can't say that I've ever mixed colors together uh, but that's pretty darn cute just like that so there's that and you can use the I would probably still clean the enamel off of the sides and any on the back with my sanding block because sometimes those the pro polish pads are great for lots of different things but um, not for everything you could hit it with the nail block too if you want to get a little bit more aggressive I love these things okay so that's the little house that's that okay so I'm just touching on the vintage and I'm only touching on the impress arts but that's up next so now I'm going to take a piece of roller printed metal and that would be this oh but there's one issue I um on the roller printed um metal I like to uh, patina this in liver of sulfur first. I have found that it gives a better tone um, on the background even though it, it it is opaque it is not as opaque as the vintage inks are but yet uh, thicker than um, than the alcohol inks for sure. Okay so I in my oh dear Oh, okay, this one had been liver of sulfured. Okay, so now I'm going to take the uh, Impress Arts pen. This has um, a ball in it also, so you make sure that it's shaken up real well. They are nice that they give you an extra nib on the end because sometimes, you know, um, well, they all do. They all kind of just wear out. They kind of splay a little bit as you're using them, so um, it's nice that they give you an extra one. So uh, here we go. And you're just painting it on. And I always give these two coats. I have found that some pens dispense a little bit better than others. I don't know why. I don't know if it's operator error or if it is a problem with the, the pen. But um, not on, I've had a lot of different pens, but um, it doesn't happen on all of them. Just once in a while I run into one that's just a little bit either too thin, mainly too thin, 
but you can always give it a couple more coats. And this dries pretty quickly as well. I'm gonna blow on it to help speed it up a little bit maybe. And you have to prime them a little bit to get that ink going sometimes. If they're not, you're going to rub off the ink that you just put on, or the paint that you just put on. I guess I should wait till it's dry, but I'm impatient. As many of us are. Okay, so I've got what I would consider two coats on there. Whoa! Airborne. Okay. All right, let me cap that up. And what else can I say? Well, let me look at questions if there are any. Okay, when... When sanding with a pro pad, I spray mount it to a wooden block so it stays as flat as possible. That's a good idea, Patty. Okay. All right. Yeah, I thought I would just kind of give you a little uh, uh, insight into those these three different patinas. There's a ton of different patinas on the market. Um, I have tried some of them, some others, uh, but these are the ones that I tend to stick with as far as adding color. Um, so as soon as that's dry, which it's almost there, let's see here. I should show you, I have it handy. I should show you. A birdhouse made with, I don't know if you can see that, a little birdhouse with, oh, it's crooked here, with a little um, soldered on cap and bottom, drilled a little hole. And this has got the, um, I'm not sure which, I think this has got the vintage patina on it. But that's another idea, something that you can do. Uh, and this was part of a project that I did for the bead and button class, was these little flowers. Um, and these are nothing more than uh, round discs punched out and flower discs that you can buy. And uh, you dome them. You put a hole in them, whatever, and uh, they're etched. I etched these first and uh, then added the alcohol links to them, and that makes a cute little uh, bouquet. It went in It went in a little pocket. Uh, these happen to have enamels in this pocket, but um, these little flowers could go in there too without getting into the enamel aspect, it, you know, if you were going to have to pick one or the other. Of course, I'd go with enamel, but you know, but this is fun. This is absolutely fun. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that. And there was something else I was going to add about that. Oh, the, um, I said in the etching video last week that I primarily use 20 gauge copper, uh, but 18 is good too. If you want to let it go longer to get a deeper etch, then I would start off with 18 gauge um, for certain pieces. You, you you don't really need to use that for everything, but uh, I've I found that you just get a, a better etch the longer you uh, have it in the tank, and uh, the 18 gauge would be good for that. Okay, so this piece is dry now, and I'm going to take my sanding sponge, 
put my eyes back on here. And very lightly, I'm going to reveal the raised edges. edges of the piece. I don't know what I was going to do with this piece since there's a hole in the middle of it, but oh well. Okay, so these, if I was going to dome this, then I would I would do that now, uh, but I'm not. It, it's just uh, just here for demonstration purposes. Let me get rid of this paper towel. That's distracting. Well, so is that. That's icky. All right, we'll go on here. Okay, so we've got these three pieces. Uh, where is the vintage one that I did? Right here, this is the house. And I'm going to put the vintage sealant on Come on, baby. Okay, I'm going to put the vintage sealant on on this house. You could also put a very thin layer of resin on the top if you wanted to give it a little bit more dimension. That's totally doable. Um, I guess I should have done this. I like to put my pieces on something, so they're not going to stick to this craft foam, but uh, certain things they might. So that kind of puts them apart. All right, so we're reaching the end here of our little demo. Um, the next thing is like a spray booth. And if you can do this outdoors, that's where I would do it. Um, I'm gonna do it here just because all my stuff is here to show you. But basically all I do is I take a box or a piece of cardboard and I line up some craft sticks. I don't know if you can see that. I line up some craft sticks and I place the pieces on top of the craft sticks so the pieces don't stick to the cardboard. So I'm going to put those on there. And, okay, I'm going to give it a little hit of this stinky stuff. Like I said, I recommend you do it outdoors, really. Or if you're going to do it indoors, do it near a window and have a fan because you don't want to be breathing this stuff. But I'm going to take a hit for you guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give it a, a little spray. And, and this, bleh, this is where this stuff comes alive. I mean, seriously, it does. That spray makes a world of difference on your piece. All right. Now I can't pick the sucker up. Okay. Here we go. It just makes, especially the, the alcohol ink, it just makes that come alive. It just makes that color pop. So generally, 
I will leave these undisturbed um, for maybe, I don't know, at least 12 hours probably, overnight, 24 hours, whatever. I mean, if you could just leave them alone, that would be the best thing. They, they are tacky for quite a while, um, but then they dry perfectly, and, and there's no tackiness whatsoever in the pieces once they're uh, once they're sealed completely. So, ooh, feels good to have those off. So yeah, I mean it's it's once they're done, it's it's a hard coat. Um, I've not scratched any of these. I mean I think you'd have to be really rough to uh, do some damage on it or purposely do it. Uh, I, I think normal everyday wearing would be just fine for these pieces. You know, I, I think it's pretty doable. I mean, for, for someone who likes the look of uh, colorized metal, it's, uh, it's a nice option. Not everybody can do everything, and um, this just gives you another um, choice. You know, it's, it's all about choices and what you enjoy doing. And for me, I mean, if I can show you something that you will get joy from, that that's great. It uh, it's it makes my day. I love to enable people. I'm very bad that way, uh, but I will share just about anything with you, except my food. I won't I won't go that way. But anyway, if you have any other questions, uh, you know, go ahead and ask. I'll stay on here for just another minute or two. What are the little blue sticks, uh, Debbie? These are uh, micro tip applicators. I know it's backwards, um, but the I'm going to have uh, a materials list after I'm done with this broadcast. Then I will uh, add information to to it, um, and um, hopefully you can find the things that you're looking for. Fran, the the spray that I used is called Royal Coat Decoupage, a high gloss finish, which they no longer make this particular product, but I believe that uh, the Mod Podge company took over Royal Coat. I, I could be wrong, but I think, I think that that's the thing uh, with that. But any acrylic, glossy acrylic spray should work. I think you could even dip it in Protect-to-Clear if you have that. Uh, I, I wouldn't buy that specifically for this, but if you have it for other uh, jewelry applications, you could give it a little dunk uh, or spray with that, and I think it'll work just as well. Um, let's see. I do not have an Amazon affiliate link, but I'll tell you what, if, if there's anything that you can get and get it on Francesca's affiliate link. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but if you could use her affiliate link uh, to give her credit for any of this stuff, I would be more than happy to uh, to have you go that way. So, um, oh, thank you, Deb. Thank you. I, I know, I'm always nervous. You can see my face is flushed. Um, I think maybe over time, you know, that I do these a little bit more often, maybe I'll get a little bit more comfortable. Um, I, I truly do want to present these things to you, but I, I know that um, I'm a little awkward at it, but maybe in time it'll be better. And my buddies have been cheering me on, so um, so that's always a nice, a nice thing. So, uh, yeah, if you have any other questions, uh, just please feel free to uh, post it on the group. If you have other people that you would like to uh, invite to the group, uh, the only thing I ask is that they are people that are interested in this sort of thing. Um, I have made that pretty specific on my Facebook page that if you're a jewelry maker or mixed media artist, uh, to, to please go ahead and request to join. Uh, I'd like to see the group grow. It, you know, I've got like 175 people already in in less than two weeks time and for me I, I consider that a real plus and I know my friends Gwen and, and Francesca have been responsible for much of that and and I say a, a really uh, heartfelt thank you to you guys because um, 
you know, it's, it's hard to get recognized and having that little push and uh, a little exposure, it can go a long way for you. So I, I truly am uh, thankful and grateful for that. So, okay, you guys, uh, I hope it was helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed presenting it to you. And I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I, I've been kind of thinking about that. I don't know if I should do resin or uh, another chain mail or whatever. I mean, I have a long list of things that I could do, but if uh, if you want to uh, chime in and uh, give me some suggestions, I'd be uh, happy to, to take a look at those and see what I can come up with. So thank you guys. Uh, I appreciate it and see you on Facebook.